and then you can uh, just get us started cooking. Yes, yeah, so how are you? Good evening to everyone. Uh, the item that we're going to be doing today is, uh, it comes from poblano peppers. It's a, it's a pepper that's not well known. It's, uh, it grows in a part of um, Puebla. That's where the name comes from, poblano pepper. Uh, there's a couple of dishes that are made with it. Again, this is not, this is very traditional Mexican food that we're about to cook. Um, again, we're going to use also uh, panela bread, panela cheese, sorry. Uh, again, that's not common. It's kind of like a mozzarella, like a fresco cheese. Um, you can do any cheese that you like, but uh, I'm trying to be very, very authentic and going back to the roots of Mexico. All right, great. Okay, so you'll have to do it slow and steady for me. I will. But, uh, can you start us, uh, start us cooking? Yeah, let's go to our kitchen. Welcome to r, &R. All right, so a couple of things. We're gonna be doing a couple of steps at a time. Uh, one of them, uh, so this is the poblano pepper that I'm telling you. And it has like a like a glossy skin around it. They're, they look like green peppers. They do not taste like green peppers. They're a totally different taste. A little more tangy, they're not as sweet. Um, again, this is something that my grandma used to do it, my mom, I mean, we eat this a lot in Mexico. Uh, so the first thing you do is you wanna, all you do is just want to put them in fire. You want to use a little bit of oil, just a little bit of oil. And we're going to put them straight on the stove. You can rub in the oil. They're going to get a little bit of burn and that's not what we want, okay? Exactly what we want. If you don't have a gas stove, you can actually just put a, uh, a flat top and then put them to do the same thing or in a skittle, skillet. And again, the noises that they make, it's, food needs to make noise. So every time you cook, you want to hear that noise. Yeah, I had to look a few times at the recipe as I put my poblano peppers on the directly on the grill. I said, are you sure I need to do it directly on the grill? But it, it, it's exactly right. Correct. That's how you do it. Starting to get that. Uh, you see that? That's what you want. Just want to just turn them, just turn them over. My grandma used to use her hands. I don't know how she did it. Uh, while that's going on, we're going to start working with our um, wajillo peppers. This is dry wajillo peppers. We're going to clean them up and we're going to uh, let them rest in uh, warm water. So you take that off. I'm going to open it up. We'll just get rid of the seed. All right. I'm gonna use six of them for this recipe. Mm -hmm. Just take this off. If you shake it, it's just gonna come out. Mm -hmm. This one's, uh, they're not spicy. Uh, they, they give a lot of flavor to the, you, you, we use this on soups. We use this on uh, different types of uh, food that we do in Mexican food. Uh, and the color, it's going to release a nice red color. I really like them a lot. And again, they're not strong. They're not uh, overpowering. And of course, they're not spicy at all. And then Chef, well, just to clarify. So I got the dried um, wajillo ch chilies. Um, yep. so I'm just going to put them, six of them, directly into a warm bowl. Warm bowl, yep. About to do that right now. Show it to me. Here it is. There's warm water. All we're gonna do is just, just empty them there. 
What's going to do is uh, it's going to loosen up the uh, the chilies, the guajillo peppers. Make sure you take the seeds out, okay? If you leave them on, nothing's going to happen, but I mean, you don't want the seeds in there. You don't, you know. How are you doing over there? Good? Yep. Yeah. All I'm right. just trying to get the seeds out. Um, so I'm just kind of cracking them in half and. and yep. That's okay. fine. Great. Peppers are coming along great. One of the things I, I love about Mexican food is uh, this culture, really. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it has to do all, it goes all the way back to the Aztecs and the Mayas. Um, our food is so traditional. It, was, it goes all the way back then. I mean, they used to do tortillas when the Aztecs were mm -hmm. just building um, what's called Mexico City now. Uh, so this is, this is as authentic and as way back as, it, as you're going to get. Yeah, and Shepard, so, so just tell me, how did you um, how did you decide to pick this particular recipe? Well, I wanted to share something that uh, I do with my family, and again, something that my grandma has done. Um, and I also wanted to teach people other items that you know that a taco or a fajita that people a burrito. I wanted to teach them something that's very authentic and that goes really way back, and and they're going to use a lot of peppers and a lot of things that. Maybe you might not be familiar with. And is this a family recipe? Uh, this is a somewhat a family recipe. I mean, we've been cooking it for a long time in our family. I really don't know where it came from, honestly. Uh, and then there's a lot of variations to this. So this is how the this is how you want it to look. So it's nice and dark, both sides. It's perfect. And we're gonna put them in a bag, okay? Get a bag real quick. All right, so I am right now taking my dry chili peppers, cracking them in half, and putting them and in. I, and I saw you went really fancy, and you put a a, a Ziploc bag. But now you can just use a regular regular bag. Okay. You got really fancy on me. I saw it. <laughs> I was just trying to grab whatever I had in my drawer, so it ended up being <laughs> that will work. That works. That works. And then just just keep them. And is it okay if it's a like when you say it should just be warm? It shouldn't be a hot bowl. It shouldn't be a what? Uh, it, it's just a warm water in the in right. The bowl. Just warm water. No, not boiling water. Not just warm yeah. water. It's going to loosen up the peppers, and we're going to use that water also when we uh, when we blend the ingredients. All right, there goes the other pepper. See, that's what you want to look. You might see some of my staff. We are open. We are serving food, so they're doing that on the you know next 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 door beside us. So, Chef Rod, can you tell us when did you start cooking? I started cooking when I was 16 years old. So my first job was in a restaurant. Uh, I was actually 15 month, 15 years and nine months. That's when you are allowed to work here. Uh, so my dad used to work in a restaurant and uh, you know, like a young guy wanted to make some money and cook. And that's how I started. So I went over where my dad used to work and I started doing salads. That's how I started working, just doing salads. A couple of weeks went by and uh, they asked me, they were like, can you make a cake for Sunday brunch? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. They gave me a book, they gave me $20 and they say, okay, Chef Ron, go and buy a, the ingredients and and good luck so that saturday i you know after finishing all my prep i went and uh, went across the street bought the stuff and uh i started making my first baking my first cake and uh on sunday when they when it was time when they sell it when they sold it like it sold really quickly it was so good they sold it really quickly so next week they said can you make another one so i was like okay and uh it just kept on growing and growing till i stopped uh uh, all I did was just cakes. Every Saturday, I would show up and do three or four uh, cakes at a time. And uh, it was really self-taught. It's not like I went to uh, school or anything. I, I think it's in me, of course. It's, uh, I really believe it's in me. It's inside of me. Um, 
the flavor and how to do things and the passion for the food. And, um, and that's just how, that's how he started cooking, 16 years old. Wow. Now that I think about it, I can't believe that they will let the 16 year old do their older cakes. Uh, <laughs> back then it was just fun for me. I was making $5 an hour, $5 an hour. Uh, I would work eight hours and I will, my check would be $35 after taxes. Uh, and and um, just check out, we had one question from the audience. Yeah, yeah. Is there a good substitute for the um, Wagyu, um, the Wagyu uh, peppers? What's a good substitute? Is, the, is there a good substitute? No, no, they're not really, no. That, they're going to give them a, a, a taste that, you know, it's particular to it. Okay. Three. So on this two. Because I will tell you, I also could not find these at uh, the grocery store. Them? Uh, so we order them online. Okay, great, great. Yeah, yeah they're uh, Spanish stores. Are, they're pretty. Uh, they're starting to become very common now. Any Spanish grocery yeah. store will have them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so right, you just waiting for two more, and that's it. Okay. Okay. So All you're right. putting the peppers and salt yeah. in the bag. Yeah, I'm about to salt them. So we'll go ahead and uh, just a little bit of salt. All right. And then check out, so what's the salt for in the, I mean, why do you put it in with the peppers? It, it's going to be very easy. First of all, it's giving them flavor and also it's going to be easy to clean them up. Okay. All right. All right. I wanted to do this process because uh, there's people that probably have never done it before. So I really want to take my time to do this. Yeah. And so you're basically just continuing to use the tongs and rotate the peppers. Correct. Correct. Okay. And how do you know when they're done? Uh, well, you see, you see how they're getting brown right here. You see how the skin starts peeling off. That's what we want. Okay. That's what we want. Yeah, the skin just peels off. That's what we want. That's how you know they're getting ready. And you said about five to seven minutes? Yep. Okay. This one's almost done. So Chef Rod, I know you said that you're at r, &R Taqueria right now cooking. Yep. How did, you know, why did you decide to open up your own restaurant? And how did you get from cooking, baking oh, man. this? My story is very, very interesting. So like I said, I started, uh, Okay, once before that, once, yeah. once it's done, we'll go ahead and uh, just close the bag. Okay. And we'll just put them on the side. And they're going to be cooking while they're here. They're going to continue cooking, and it's going to be easy for us to take the skin off. And we put them aside for, a couple, for about 10 minutes, okay? Okay. And then, Chef Rod, are you putting them just aside, or are you putting them in the fridge? Just put them on the side, or you can put them on the fridge. I'm going to put them on the side, because we're going to be done pretty quickly here. Okay, great. Okay. All right. We grab some, uh, what's it called, calabazos, Mexican calabazos. I've got two types, okay? And we're gonna cut them, we're gonna slice them, slide them, okay? Take this off, take that off. Okay. All right, don't do little strips. All right. And then I'm gonna use this one also so you guys can see it. So Chef Rod, I've got to ask you a question because yep. I I ended up uh, sort of cutting and dicing my- um, No problem. Is no that problem. okay? No problem, again. All right, so now I know, next time. No um, and one question we are getting from Judith is, what is the round uh, squash? Um, it looks like a zucchini, can we use them? It's like, it's like a zucchini, it, it's called calabaza. That's what it's called, it's a Mexican round calabaza. Uh, again, it's a zucchini, but it's round. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, and so when I went to the grocery store, I looked for a zucchini squash. Yep. I'm just trying to show you other stuff also that you can add to the. Uh, yeah, recipe. great. Yeah. So while I'm cutting here, I got, uh, I was telling you, um, so I started working in a restaurant 15, uh, nine months. And all of a sudden I got the, uh, I started work, going to school. Uh, I went to school to become a uh, commercial pilot. That's my career. I'm actually a commercial pilot. But while I was going to school, I always continue working in a restaurant. So I will work full time and I will go to school full time. And, um, that's how I really started uh, into all of this uh, that has to do with uh, with food. Uh, opening up my restaurants after I, after I started flying for a couple of years, I became a, um, a commercial pilot. I also became a cargo pilot. I got furloughed in 2008, 2009 when the economy was sinking. Um, I got furloughed, there was no more jobs and my dad knew the owner of the gas station. Um, that's where actually I started my first restaurant inside a gas station. So my dad said, look, uh, my son's going to be without a job. Can you can you lease him the space that he's adding? And the guy was like, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, and that's how I started r and Um It was really, I again, thank goodness I didn't think about it. Thank goodness I wasn't really um, worried about, let me see about the space. Let me look about the coloring uh, tables and the sign. Nothing it was really because I needed to be, you know, be with a job. And now we're going to have a job. And I had a family, I already had two kids. So um, I really had to get going. Amazing. It's, do, you, do you miss flying? Oh yeah, I fly, I still fly. Okay. So uh, I still fly, I'm still a commercial pilot. I'm a flight instructor. I was flying earlier this afternoon. So I'm, I'm always flying, yep. Wow, you have right. you've had a more adventurous day than I have. <laughs> All right, so I, got a, so I got some squash here, okay. I'm gonna get some other stuff that I, I like some stuff and I like some cool food. So I got some mushrooms, okay? Just regular mushroom, I'm gonna slice, slice them, slice them. I really like mushrooms, so we're just gonna add that to it. And it's about a quarter cup of squash. Mushroom, whatever you like, how much you like. I got some parsley. Fresh parsley. Use a, a quarter cup of parsley. And so you're saying yeah, the smell part of the of the squash. What was that again? Sorry. You're 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 setting aside a part of the squash. Correct. Part of the squash. And so you said about a quarter cup of that. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna put all this together on a on a pan. And and some diced onions. Let me get them right here. A quarter cup of uh, sliced uh, diced onions, white onions. Right. All right. So we're gonna grab a saute pan. Uh, two tablespoons of uh, oil. You can use vegetable oil. You can use uh, canola oil, virgin olive oil. That's what I'm using. How you doing? Are you still hanging in there? Yep. I All am. Good? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. And you said a quarter. You said a quarter cup of the squash. Quarter cup of squash. Okay. Quarter cup of uh, mushroom. A quarter of uh, yeah. uh, parsley. A quarter cup of onions. Yeah. We're also going to do uh, 
a three three cups of garlic. Really so like garlic cutting. a lot. Okay, is this the minced garlic or are you di are you you're cutting it? Okay. I'm cutting it, yep. I, I, I kind of put, I, I like to put a lot of garlic on my food. Yeah, me too. I can never get enough garlic. <laughs> yeah. All together there. And uh, let's see. I'm so one of the, the funny things that happened while I was doing the, the restaurant is that uh, my my, uh, my first the first write up on my restaurant was a uh, was on the Wall Street Journal. Believe it or not, I was uh, I was uh, serving some, uh, a family and I was like, "Well, thanks for coming. How did you hear about us?" He was like, "Well, we saw you on the Wall Street Journal." I was like, "What do you mean the Wall Street Journal?" I was like, yeah, we actually uh, got a chance to, uh, you were on the on the paper. So I was like, I can't believe it. So he went and bought the paper and brought it to me. And oh, wow. there I was on top five uh, Mexican restaurants inside a gas station. And, and you didn't uh, even know. That they I didn't know. I didn't even know that they have written about us. So it was really, really great. Uh, from there, food critics started coming over. And uh, next thing you know, a year later, we're on the Food Network. I get a phone call from... Uh, from the producers of uh, Diners, Drivers, and Dives, and they're like, "Hey, uh, this is Chef Ryan." I was like, "Yeah, so we would like to go and uh, record over at your uh, location." I was like, "Are you serious?" I was like, "You know where I am? I'm inside a gas station." And uh, I was like, "Yeah, we know where you are." And two weeks later, they were filming, and uh, you know, it's just it's just amazing, uh, that and very humbling that I was able to uh, to make it. You know, that is very cool. All right, this is this is hot now. I'm gonna go ahead and pour them in there. All the ingredients, onions. Put salt and pepper. And we're gonna put some uh, oregano, Mexican oregano, dry oregano. Oh man, I wish you can smell it. it smells delicious. Yeah, it does. I'm also gonna put a quarter of cilantro. Okay, and one question we have yep. is, what is Mexican oregano called if you look for it in Spanish? Also, ore, oregano, oregano, same thing, it's oregano, oregano. And another question is, uh, will a written, written recipe be available at the end? Absolutely, well, so we'll be sending out the full recipe um, so that you can make sure you can uh, try this at home. By contrast to usually the warning of don't try this at home, we no, want you to try this at home. Correct. And Chef Rod, is this something that you serve at r, r Taqueria? No, no, this is just for you. I made this just for you. Wow. Yep. So you hear, you heard it here first. This is an exclusive recipe this is, that's right. That's provided right. to this audience. That's it. No, it's nobody else. Uh, me, my family, and you now. <laughs> Your family now, so. And you have it on just like medium fire? Medium fire, yep. Want to let the vegetables cook, get them, get them soft a little bit. The smell is just, it's amazing. I mean, honestly, I love it. So, uh, Chef Rod, can you tell the audience? I know um, you started in the gas station, but kind of what's, what's your what's your footprint look like now? Well, uh, so after uh, 10 years, we actually turned 10 years this year. Uh, we have uh, two locations, one in Baltimore, Inner Harbor, a beautiful location, a pool restaurant uh, with a pool bar. This, this location is actually one of, like, 
everything I wanted, I, I got a big walk-in refrigerator, a big kitchen, everything new, uh, a lot of stuff that are custom made. And then the front, we did the front was, was amazing. The decoration, uh, we actually brought someone from Colombia to do a graffiti wall. It's about maybe 20, 20 feet tall. It goes all the way from the first floor to all the way to the ceiling. And, uh, and it's all made with the graffiti and it's, it's the colors are amazing. The floor is amazing. I mean, uh, we've, we've come a long way. And we have another location in Weimarsh that's also doing great uh, with this time of with the pandemic and all this. I mean, they've been doing great because we do a lot of to go and uh, hopefully pretty soon we'll be opening up another location. We want to expand, we want to do other stuff. I already wrote a book. Uh, I just need to really take the pictures. Uh, the book is already done. I just need to do the recipes and, uh, and, 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 and finish it up. We also did some sauce, hot sauce. We did a green sauce and a hot yeah. sauce. Uh, it's called Juana hot sauce. Uh, they, they actually, we serve them every day here in our restaurant. Now we put them in bottles so people can actually take them home. Great. Right. So you mentioned, you know, how have you been impacted by the pandemic? Uh, well, uh, definitely been, we've definitely been impacted. I think like everybody else, we had to, we had to cut some, some, uh, some people off. We have to, there's not a lot of businesses as before. Um, but we've been blessed that we, we everything, ha we're still, we're still moving along and things are moving forward. And uh, it looks like uh, things are going to open up uh, eventually. In the city, I got, I'm surrounded by buildings and office buildings. So yeah. this is the one that suffer more than the other one in White Marsh. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of time, just uh, riding the wave. <laughs> yeah, I think for many reasons, we're all, I think, eager to let the right. COVID clouds lift. Right. All right, I'm going to put this to the side. Their, their vegetables are cooked. And I'm going to put it to the side, okay? Now, I can put my peppers in the fridge, so I'm going to go take them out. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so now we're preparing what we're going to put in the blender. Now we're going to prepare the sauce, okay? Okay. We're going to go ahead and do the sauce. So let's go ahead and we're going to come over here to our blender. All right, we get. We're going to use six, uh, we're going to use two serrano peppers. Okay, and this ones are more spicy than the jalapeno. This are this are spicy, so don't overdo it. If you like spice, go ahead and put one more. So two so serrano just, peppers. You just basically took the, the tops off and you're just gonna put them right in. Top off and put them right in, yep. The other thing uh, that, you, that you can do, uh, why don't we do that? We're gonna do a little, something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and take them out. We're gonna put them on the flat top real quick. We're gonna put this, the garlic and the tomatoes on the flat top. Uh, so that way they, they, uh, they get a little bit of char, okay? okay. Let's go, come on. Just a little oil. Okay, so, so Chef Rod, just to make sure I translate to those who do not have a commercial kitchen, is it all right if we just try to put this on the on the gas stove and maybe hold it up with tongs? You could, yeah, you can do it on the gas stove. You can also put it on a saute pan. Yeah. Just okay. put a little bit of oil and just start them right there. Use six tomatoes. Garlic. And the garlic, is that minced or is that just full garlic? And we're also going to use a, a quarter of a, an onion. Okay. Now, it's a tip for later on. If you guys want to do a salsa, like a real salsa and a hot sauce, you can do this process and uh, your sauce is going to be amazing. So 
So you, okay, so cook the onions too. Uh, cook the tomatoes, okay. Yep. So six tomatoes, two serrano peppers, a quarter of an onion, onion and three garlics. While they're there, we put a little bit of salt. One of the things that really bother me when I go out to eat is when I go to restaurants and there's no taste on the on, on any on the there's no flavor. I'm like, man, just put a little bit of salt and pepper. That's that's it. Just that's one thing that really gets me a lot. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, my um my family's from Sri Lanka and it is an island um full of flavor. And so anytime uh, my husband, um, his family's Irish Catholic, uh, oh, kind of a meat and potatoes kind of guy. So right. I put on any spice and he's just like, oh, too much, too much. But for me, I can't get enough. No, yeah, I like I like spice, weed spice. Uh, <laughs> my kids have spice, I mean, our candy has spice. Um, we put spice on anything, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just sort of grill the, okay. All right. Put rather blender while this thing is heating up. Yeah, it's sizzling over here. I don't know if you can hear it in the audience. Are you guys doing okay? You're doing good? Yeah. All right. Okay, so now all of this is gonna go in our grill. We're gonna, I mean, go, sorry, gonna go the blender, yep. Our blender. Okay. Yep. If you don't have, uh, you know, just Tomatoes, you can use a whole peeled tomatoes. If you have canned, that's fine. All right. Are yours ready? Yep. All right, so now remember the wahia peppers, right? Yeah. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab them. We're gonna put them in here. Okay, so we're gonna put the peppers into the blender. That's right. And we're gonna use a little of that water About half a cup. All right. And this is obviously it's going to be pretty spicy. Is that right? I mean, so if people want to make it a little less spicy, what would you recommend? Uh, just put one serrano pepper. That's it. Like I said, the wahillo is not spicy. It's going to okay. give it flavor and color. Yeah. It's not going to be spicy. And then uh, a little oregano, a tablespoon of oregano. And you said how much of the water? Uh, about a, a cup. A cup, okay. Once I start blending, then I'll see. Usually I start up with a, a cup. And the other thing, we put some cilantro. So chop cilantro. And you said a quarter cup of that. A quarter cup of that, yep. Actually, I'm going to put a little more. Like... All set? Yeah. Okay. And you said for the oregano, how much? Uh, a tablespoon. Tablespoon, okay, great. Put a little more salt. I'm pretty sure it's going to need it. All right, let's go ahead and blend this. I'm going to put it on mute for a second to spare the audience. Yeah, let me know.
failure. Right? So, mm, you can see the color. You see how the, uh, let me know when I'm, I'm on. Oh, okay. You see how the wahiyo gives it that red color? Yeah. And again, the smell is, is just so fresh. All right, I'm gonna open up my blender, see if it came out half as good as that. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it smells delicious. All right, great, okay. Great, all right. Let's go on a, uh, how do you say? Do this up here a little bit. All right, so we have here saucepan. And it should be, so it should be a bigger, it should be bigger than this. It should be more like a pot. Yeah, you know, like a little pot. I mean, I, I use this saucepan. I mean, uh, we're not gonna, we're gonna put just some of it, not, not a lot of it. Okay. We use a big saute pan, round saute pan. Let's put some out. Uh, Olive oil in. Two tablespoons. Put a little bit more of mine. I like, I like all the parts. Okay, and then start warming up the olive oil. Yep, start warming it up. All right, while that's warming up, okay, now we're going to go ahead and get to the going to be our peppers. Now we're going to clean them up. Take one out. Use our hands. Just going to take that skin off. See the top skin? Just comes off automatically. Just peel it off, okay. Just peel it off. So folks can see it's sort of, it's kind of charred. Yep. Okay. All that, it's just gonna come off right, right away. See? If you don't wanna use the finger, you can just grab a small knife and just I gotta say, after a long day, there's something about working with your hands, getting right yeah. into it. So we have a saying in Mexico that the flavor's in the hand of the of the guy that makes a taco. <laughs> I think that's a good saying. And you really want to get every little piece of no, the jar. Yeah, off. as much as you can, as much as you can. Okay. Some of it will come off, some of it will not. Yeah. See how it's peeling off? Yeah. Seems like you can also can put them in like underneath water. Some people use water and just, you know, so you don't need to just fill it off. Okay. And if oh. there are hard, any hard parts to the pepper still. So if there are what, sorry? If, if there are any hard parts to the pepper still. So I'm feeling like at the very bottom it's not hard, but it's not as moist as the middle part. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it should be okay. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's, I mean, it should be cooked. This, this pepper cooks really fast. Okay. So it's not like it's going to get you sick or it's not cooked enough. No, it's just, it's a vegetable, so. Yeah. Plus we're gonna put it right now in the sauce. So you're gonna, it's gonna end up, it's gonna finish cooking there. Yeah. All right, so we got all that, right? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, we're gonna take the top off right here. See that? I'm gonna make it, cut it halfway. We're gonna take, take this off right here. 
So you basically you took the top part off and then you cut it in half. Correct. And we're going to go ahead and just take the tip off because we're going to use this like this. All right, put on the side. Cut it in half. And if you can see, the inside is moist and it's warm. So that's what I'm telling you. It just keeps cooking. Once, once it's in the bag, it keeps cooking. You're basically just cutting a kind of a, a slit and opening it up that way? Yeah, be very gentle because we are going to use it. So be gentle when you, you cut it half open. And from each one, you're making two, is that right? Correct. Are you doing good? Catching up? I think so, yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, let's see. Any other They're catching them. Have. They're okay for now. So take all the, the tip wrap. So mine's a little bit bigger, kind of a little longer than yours. Is that all right? That's fine. That's okay. So the goal here is try to make them as small, try to buy the- try, We're trying to make a square. We're gonna make a square. You'll see why, because we're about to roll them, so. Okay. Now this, this pepper is also used for uh, chile rellenos, okay? It's the same process, uh, but then we will buy, batter them with uh, egg whites. That's to make our chile rellenos, our famous chile rellenos. I think I'm gonna rinse mine under the, uh, the water just to get some of the char off. Okay, go ahead. Wash my hands real quick. But just for the audience, I think the brown peppers I bought were maybe a little bit bigger. Um, so my suggestion is, you're going shopping, is think about buying slightly smaller ones. Um, they're a little bit more unwieldy. The big peppers I got. I haven't tried the sauce yet, yet, but it's looking very appetizing. Okay, we're ready for the next step. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. How you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. This, these All right. I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead. And let's put the sauce in the uh, saucepan. And this is one of my favorite. The noise, the, the, the sound that makes. So pour all of it into the saucepan. Half of it, okay? We're not half of it. Yeah, half of it. Just enough to cover your your pan, okay? Like a layer of it. There we 
go. Okay, good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish our peppers here. So we're gonna put them one on top of each other like this. We're gonna put some uh, sliced panera, uh, panela bread. Panela cheese, sorry. No. Now they have to pay for that commercial. <laughs> okay, so you're just having slices of the cheese. Yep. For those who um, can't find that, I couldn't. So I got queso fresco. Yep. We'll grab our, our veggies. With me? Yes. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and roll them up. Okay, All right. so roll it up tight. So you basically took two, two peppers. Yep. Together. Okay, yep. Put the stick to hold them. I'll use a toothpick to hold it. And so you just put one toothpick through the whole thing. Yep, just to hold it. You see, it's holding it here. It's holding it here. And the next one. All right, here we go. From this side. Okay. All right. And all this time, the sauce is simmering. Yep, the sauce, sauce is simmering, yep. And we're gonna go ahead and put this inside, okay? We're gonna put them inside. Okay, so I can't say that mine looks as pretty as yours, for sure. But if this holds together, I'm going to view that as success. Okay. I see you working. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to just put this right into the. Okay, and then you just let them simmer there. Yes, just let them simmer, correct. See that? All right, and Chef Rob, I'm gonna just ask you, so my sauce, if it gets a little bit dry. Okay. You, you I... remember, that, remember that water from the guajillo? Go ahead yeah. and just pour, pour some of that in there. So just so, so folks can yeah. see. So oh, mine got a little bit dry here. Um, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Yeah, use the same water that uh, from the Wahia. Okay, yeah. And then we're just gonna let it 
simmer for a little bit? Yep, just gonna let it simmer for a couple of minutes. And then are we gonna turn, um, do we turn them? What was that? Do we, do we turn, uh, do we turn them while they're in the, in the, in the pan? Yep, just a couple minutes and then we'll turn them over, okay? Okay, so let me just see if we have any further. We'll put a little more salt on mine. Mine need a little more salt, so I'll put a, another pinch of salt. Okay, great. Be very careful when you clip. I'm gonna move these. And so as you turn them, you're just basically doing that at a slow pace. You are you trying to pick up some of the sauce and put it on the top of it as you're doing no, that? No, 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 just uh no, I'm not. We'll you we'll plate it. We'll plate it with the sauce. So. And is it all right to add another toothpick if it looks like it's, if it feels like it's coming apart a little bit? Yeah, just, just add, add another tooth, as many tooth, toothpicks as you need. Don't forget to uh, count them and take them off. <laughs> Please. Okay. And Chef Rob, why do you think that this is such a beloved dish? Well, uh, Again, we use uh, we use the poblano pepper a lot. So from here, there's many combinations that you can do. So the last step, right, where we had where we uh, roll them up, you can batter them in egg whites and then kind of have like a chile relleno. You can also um, just batter them with bread and then fry them, and then now you have a different dish. You can add meat to it. You, there's a lot of things that a lot of combinations that can come out of here. Uh, Really, there's just really, there's a lot of things you can do with this. And it, it's special because like, again, it's, it's, you know, you got the sauce, you got the guajillo, very authentic dishes. And we're using a lot of stuff that are, that are very uh, authentic. Okay, there we go. And is this served um, more as a, a sort of a, a lunch entree, dinner entree? One second, sorry. Sorry, I was doing something. What was that? No, no worries. Um, is this is this more of a, a lunch or a kind of a dinner meal? Oh, it can be a dinner, dinner or lunch. Really, doesn't doesn't matter. Whatever you want. We use this more as a dinner. Mm -hmm. And then um, two questions right. we got from the audience. One is, uh, would butcher string work as good as the toothpicks? With a, a, a string, yeah, a string will work. Yep. Okay. And then can you use ground beef? Oh yeah, of course. Product? You can put anything you want inside, anything. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take them out. Be very gentle here. Pretty much done the dish now. Take this out. Turn the sauce really low just to keep it. Take the sticks out. And now we're going to grab the oven. Okay. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and slice them. Okay. Okay. All right, this time we got a plate. Now I'm cutting these. Okay, so you're putting oh, the plate. Okay, you're gonna use that on top. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Okay. Grab a pepper. And the sauce that you put on the bottom was that from that was from the skillet? Yeah, that was the sauce from the skillet. Yep, that's it. Okay. I'm a little bit sheepish to show uh, my version of this dish, but I want to make sure people feel like they can do this too. It may not look as pretty as yours, but. Yep, don't worry about it. It's not about pretty. Exactly. Well, at the end, it's a good taste good, right? It could look really good, but it doesn't taste good. It doesn't matter. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and finish it with a little bit of. Finish it up with a little bit of sour cream. Oh, that's beautiful. You want to garnish with a little bit of cilantro. And that's your dish right there. Wow. Okay. All right. This is this is the novice version of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's great. So, Chef Rod, I know that it's getting late. I'm just going to rinse my hands real quick. Um, if you have a minute, I know the audience would love to. Obviously, they've learned a bit about you um, and R and R Taqueria. But I was hoping I could just ask you a couple more um, questions. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, one of the questions I have for you is, you know, you moved to Maryland from Mexico City when you were 10. Right. So yes. what was life for you and your family? In, and what do you remember about that time? Well, our, our, our life wasn't, it's not, wasn't easy. It's not easy. Um, so I, I, don't, I didn't know the, the language, okay? My parents did not know the language. Uh, we only had, my grandma was here. Um, I remember when we when we first arrived, we slept like on an attic of a house in Riverdale, right here in Maryland, and it was just a just a mattress and and us. Um, we went through a lot of difficult times. Um, being an immigrant, it's it's not it's not easy. Um, we went through very difficult times. Um, like I said, we didn't know the language. We didn't have a job. We didn't have a car. Uh, the transportation in, in Maryland is not like the the greatest, right? Can, like in Mexico City, just Go outside, put your hand out, there'll be a cab right there. Not here. Um, we went through a lot of things, uh, but uh, we were blessed that uh, we, we believe and uh, we had God with us and, uh, and really he helped us through. Um, I, re I remember moving to our first apartment uh, in Bellsville and it was just 
my mother, my dad, and my other brother, myself, and just living in an apartment, empty apartment uh, that we were renting out. I don't know how we did it, honestly. I really don't know how we did. It. Now that we look back, we, I don't understand how we even got we got an apartment. We didn't have credit. We didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were not a lot of people speaking. I mean, this we're talking about uh, maybe the 80, 89s or something, 1989. There were not people that, that there were not a lot of Spanish people. It was it was like for instance, it was me and uh, I think it was like six or seven out of the whole high school that was that were Spanish. So other than that, it was it was very difficult. I went to summer school to practice some English and try to pick up as much as we could, um, but it was not it was not easy. Uh, my dad tells a story. He used to be a dishwasher, so they would put him as a dishwasher. Uh, that was his first job, and you know people would come behind him and uh, you know scream at him or cuss at him or try to teach him cuss words instead of English. You know. Um, you know, the, he will be, somebody told my dad one day, oh, here, I'm going to drop you off here and just walk. Later, we'll realize it was 95. They dropped my dad on 95 and he was walking on 95. Now, we're like, you can't, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. But we didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so language barrier was pretty difficult. Money-wise was, of course, very difficult. Trying to get places, it was difficult. There was only one Spanish store in Riverdale. That That's it. My grandma actually used to sell tortillas out of her her uh, truck she used to have a minivan and she used to sell tortillas out of her truck uh because there were not like shops before so it was, it was so very rough. Was pioneering the food truck industry correct correct that's right that's right that's fantastic and and just you know so we actually have a program at lirs called new american um pathways which is a program about really helping immigrants you know move into jobs and not dead-end jobs but jobs that uh, leverage their entrepreneurship. And obviously, you know, you were driven, you were ambitious. Um, how has, you know, your experience um, been colored by being an immigrant? Well, I think my whole, my whole life, it's uh, just talks about being an immigrant. Uh, like, again, I can talk to people and tell them, I know what it is to be in uh, sleeping on a mattress. That's it on the floor. Forget about the, uh, uh, the bottom mattress. No, it's just a mattress on the floor. And uh, if you work hard, if you really want to do something, uh, if you stay positive, you stay clean, make sure you're not getting into legal problems and all that, uh, you can actually make it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a testimony that, you know, I'm a, I'm a person that made it, an immigrant that made it. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And, and just on that point, obviously going from uh, the Taqueria in the gas station to being featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives um, to, you know, expanding the number of restaurants you're operating. What do you credit your success to? I, I had an experience that I really, it really turned things around for, for me. And uh, I like to, uh, I, I always like to share it because again, I can see that after that day, there was a before, right? And then after. Well, after that experience, it really changed completely everything. I was in the gas station doing a prep, right? I was prepping like normal. We were just starting out. I would go outside and hand flyers to people and tell them, try our food. Uh, the owner of the gas station will say, you know what? Why don't you sell pizza and hot dogs? I mean, Mexican food, who's going to do it? Who were the first one doing breakfast at 530 in the morning? We were open at 530 and doing Mexican breakfast. Uh, so things that, that, you know, people were not, uh, was not seen before. So I was chopping uh, my vegetables and there was a window and across the street from us, there was a Chinese restaurant. You can actually see it from my prep table to through the door, you can see the, the Chinese uh, restaurant. And I can see people walking to, to that restaurant. And I was like, well, nobody's coming to my restaurant. There's people going that way. And I remember very clearly if it was yesterday, I was chopping and then all of a sudden a voice talked to me, spoke to me. Uh, to me, for me, it was God. Uh, you can call it whatever you guys want, but to me, he spoke to my heart and he said, stop looking, stop looking around and stop looking at other people and start looking at me. When that happened after that day, it was like, I became so busy. It was so, I became so busy that I didn't even have time again to look next door. Eventually we took over that location. Uh, but 
really you have to there's there's potential inside of us inside of each one of us there's potential and we're looking around at other people and copying other people and what other people are doing when you just have to focus on you you know focus on him focus on you do what you have to do and things are just going to come uh you know when i started flying i didn't i didn't know i was going to go back to the kitchen i thought it was like i did my job i paid my dues let's go ahead and continue flying eventually i came back to it and now i'm able to do both i'm able to do the kitchen and i'm also able to fly and uh but again that day was to me a, a before and an after don't copy anybody. I don't copy anybody else. I don't be looking at what other Mexican restaurants are doing. I don't be looking at, I, I focus on what I'm doing. I bring new ideas, new stuff that I get inspired. Uh, the recipe like this one, they were like, what's the recipe? It took me a couple of days to get it to you. And I apologize, but I was like, it's here. It's in my head. I just got to put it here to paper. But uh, you just got to focus on what's inside of you. And I, and I think if you just just follow follow what's inside of you, Follow the path. Follow what God has put in, in, in front of you. Your purpose. You will make it. And then eventually, it's not about making money. It's about doing your purpose. And once you do your purpose, then you'll make money. That's just how it is. That is absolutely beautiful. And I think um, from some of the comments that I have seen, you are such an inspiration. Um, I know that we're a little after time, so I apologize for that. But I just wanted to you know, wrap up by just saying thank you so much for joining us, um, Chef Rod. For those of you that may have joined us late, um, we just heard from uh, Chef Rodrigo Alboran Torres, um, an inspiring chef. Uh, a proud immigrant and owner of r, &R Taqueria, um, who just showed us how to make stuffed poblano peppers with squash and panela cheese topped with ranchero sauce. I did my best to follow along and you were a incredible teacher. Um, if you missed the demonstration, we'll have the video on our website and Facebook page. Um, before we go, I just wanted to take this chance to tell you about one other LIRS effort. We are currently in the middle of our Hope for the Holidays campaign, um, which uh, is our campaign where we collect holiday cards and donations for gifts for children and families that are in detention. Uh, so if you want to learn more about how you can get involved, um, you can visit the lirs.org um, slash hope website. Thank you again, Chef Rod. Um, it was such a pleasure uh, to cook with you, to hear your incredible, um, inspiring story of success and passion and commitment. Um, and thanks to everyone in the audience for tuning in to LRS Culture Kitchen. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great evening and happy Thanksgiving to all. Good night. Thank you.